This lesson deals with supplemental problem 413. You can find this problem in the ECE 201 ebook in the chapter 4 supplemental problems starting on page 13. In the chapter 4 notes we looked at a basic building block we called a differential amplifier. These are often used to measure the voltage across the floating load. In other words, neither terminal is grounded. Ideally, you don't want to change the thing that you're measuring, but with our differential amplifier in the class notes, we had a current I1 and I2 coming into the input terminals. And this would draw current from whatever we're measuring. Let's take a look at a modification of this circuit called an instrumentation amplifier. And what it has is a differential amplifier with a, another op-amp circuit we're going to call a preamp. If the op-amp's ideal, we have no current coming in here and likewise no current coming in here, so therefore no loading effects. We could take these as probes and measure something across a resistor or any component and be able to detect what's there without changing it. The non-ideal op-amp does have a small current flowing, and we'll take a look at this in ECE402. Now inside this block, let's see if we can recognize any of our previous circuits. This one is our differential amplifier, and this one here is not something we've seen before. Now we have a model for this differential amplifier. Let's put that in, and then let's use that in the analysis of the uh, remaining circuitry. And let's run on the next page. So here's our model for the differential amplifier. We have a resistance, which would be R3 plus R4. And we're assuming we have a match ratio of R4 to R3. So there's a voltage 4 here, voltage 3 we'll call it. And then the output here is the difference of those two times the resistor ratio of R4 over R3. And we have a loading effect here of a resistor R3 and then a controlled source which multiplies the other input terminal times the voltage divider of R4 over R3 plus R4. And we saw this on page 32 of the class notes. Let's analyze the circuit. Since I know the output is related to the difference of V4 and V3, let me see if we can find a loop that has that differencing showing up. Let's go back to our op amp. Now again, we have feedback around it, so the voltage across it is driven to zero. The current is zero because it's a high resistance, and the same is true for the bottom op amp here. No current in, no current out, and no voltage across here. So the voltage across the resistor R1 is going to be this node voltage back to ground, which is minus zero plus V1, and from this node back to ground, plus zero plus V2. So the difference of those two gives me a difference of V1 and V2. This is shown down here in equation number one. Now, if I have voltage across this resistor, then I have current flowing, and that current's going to have to flow through here. All of it's going to go through here, back through here, and then back through here. Now, something can go back to ground, something can go this way, but around this loop, we're forcing the current I2 to flow through the three resistors. Start here, go around the loop, I've got a minus V3 and a plus V4. So let's do the rise in voltage is V3. The drop across here would then be I2 times R2, I2 times R1. I2 times R2 plus V4. And that's equation number two here. Bring this on this side of the equation. So I have V4 minus V3, and I'll put this on the other side. Now I have I2 times R2, R2, and then R1. So I've got two R2 plus R1. But what is I2? It's just equal to the voltage V sub X divided by R1. And what's V sub X? It's V1 minus V2. So that's my equation in terms of the difference of V4 and V3. Let's get rid of some of these minus signs here. I'll bring this inside and then I'll get a V2 minus V1. I'll bring the R1 inside here and I'll get a one from this term and then R2 divided by R1 times two. That's the term over here. Again, the output voltage just over here is gonna be equal to R4 over R3 times the difference of V4 minus V3. That's equal to this expression. Bring this over here, I have one plus two R2 over R1 and then the difference of V2 and V1. We've got is no current coming in. We've got an open circuit, no loading effects ideally. And they have an output voltage that's uh, constant except for a short across that would violate Kirchhoff's voltage law. But any other load than that, I would get a fixed voltage. So you know, no, no output resistance. R4 over R3, 1 plus 2 R2 over R1 times the difference of V2 minus V1. Here's our equation of our differential amplifier. And here's the voltage gain of that preamp amplifying that signal and then amplifying it a second time. We'll see in EC402 that there's a thing called a common mode voltage and this circuit is actually very good at enhancing the difference and rejecting the common signals. This is mostly for getting rid of noise. And this is supplemental problem 413.